The following is a special multimedia presentation from NorthJerseySports.com. Brought to you by the Bergen County Education Association. Bergen County Public Schools work because the BCEA works with you. It's hockey night. NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things North Jersey ice hockey. This is Season 1, Episode 9. We'll call it the Midday Edition, as we are snowed into our abodes here, and we decided to go with a little hockey talk. When it's snowing, what else should we be doing besides talking a little high school hockey with our co-hosts? First up, Fairlawn Athletic Director Corey Robinson. What's going on, Corey? Ready to roll here. Just coming off the Winter Blast this past weekend in Seacorkers. Lots of youth hockey games. We had the uh, Cutters and Old Japan play game on Friday night. So a lot of, a lot of action down here. Um, seeing we got a lot of good high school action coming up this week, which is uh, going to be some exciting games. And obviously tomorrow we got the big game between Don Bosco and Del Barton. And then next week, lots of cup playoffs. So we went from county play, county tournament action to cup playoffs and Right around the corner is the state tournament, so it's it's starting to heat up. Did uh, how had it go with Fairlawn against Old Japan at the Winter Blast? Uh, good game. Coach Qualls was there. He was looking dapper as usual. Uh, yeah. Cutters ended up winning the game. I believe it was eight to four, but uh, we had a nice turnout, a lot of people, and uh, the carnival in the park was really crowded. Uh, the mayor was expecting Mr. Doviak to show up and uh, maybe do an on-site interview, <laughs> but uh, he does he does give you a free pass on that one and does want to invite you up to town hall one day for a little ceremony, a little swearing, <laughs> swearing in, and uh, maybe the keys to the town for the day. Yes, just what I've always wanted, the keys to Secaucus, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and our other co-host here is Mawa head coach Kevin Sabella, the Maven. Coming off a big 1-1 tie against West Milford. Kev, what's going on? Not much. Not much here. Getting ready to uh, get outside after talking to you two knuckleheads, do some shoveling here. But as far as uh, hockey goes, yeah, as far as model goes, yeah, we had a nice we had a nice win versus Lakeland, and we came back a nice tie versus uh, a very hot uh, West Milford team, which got us into the States here. So we're excited, you know, for us. Uh, to get into the states, and then, uh, like Cor said, next uh, next week or two weeks from now, we got um, you know the cup playoffs, which uh, you know which I'll which I'll talk a little bit about. But uh, it's going to be interesting in all in all the divisions here. Certainly, uh, definitely interesting. Yes, let's just set up this show. First of all, let's do the social media aspect of it. You can follow us on Twitter at NJSCOM. We will give you all the updates when the show is coming, when it is posted, all that type of good stuff. If you want to find some old shows, catch up on what you missed, find us on youtube.com slash North Jersey Sports. And, Kev, I think uh, for you, it's been a, uh, you know, I would like to ask you if you did get to mention to West Milford head coach Dan Fry, who promised us some type of fare, appetizers a little bit. You played him on Super Bowl Sunday. Did he send you home with a tin? No, he did not. I told him I was making ribs, but... Um... He did not. Uh, he didn't say too much, <laughs> so so there was no ribs for him. But I had plenty uh, watching that terrible game uh, yesterday here. But yeah. um, it, it, it was you know it was a good game. His team certainly going to be a, a tough out in the uh, division in the public B. But just looking at um, you know looking at all the conference, looking at the divisions I should say in the Big North. You got the Gold Division with Ridgewood, uh, Riverdale, Fairlawn. Obviously, I'm I'm looking at each division here and. The one and twos are, are, are tough teams, or at least the one, obviously. But from from two on, I mean, it, it, it's anyone's game. I mean, it, to me, it's going to be which team obviously capitalizes on their opportunities, which team has the hot goaltender, which team stays out of the box. But I guess getting back to my point, I, I could see really any team challenging uh, the top team in each of the divisions, if that makes sense. Um, you know, specifically our division, you have Ramsey, who's obviously head and heels, over everybody else, but, you know, from two down to, to eight, I mean, it's wide open. Um, I mean, right now we're sitting in the three, but certainly Ramapo, Indian Hills, West Milford, or Lakeland, and even DePaul, who just beat um, Indian Hills, can beat anybody. And then you move up to the silver, you know, you got Glenrock, obviously, who's on top, but St. Joe's is right behind them. Um, and then from there, you have Tenafly, PV, Highlands, and Paramus. Paramus just beat PV badly. So, again, you know, Anybody can beat anybody there. And then you move up to the uh, gold division with Ridgewood, obviously, on top. 
But, you know, a good Riverdale team. And then you got the Cutters, who are obviously hot. you got Primus Catholic, who could, who could certainly beat anybody. And Hackensack, Clifton, and, and PV, who could uh, upset somebody. So I guess my point is you better bring your A game in the Cup division because it's one game, and that's, that's all it's going to take here. Yes, and somewhere in that long, eloquent soliloquy that you just delivered, nice. we're a couple of good segues there because, speaking of hot teams, we will have Dennis Jellick on the show is the head coach of the Paramus Spartans. They were long since buried when they got off to a 1-7 and seven start to the season. And then, lo and behold, an 8-2 and two streak in their last 10 has them back to 9-9 nine and nine and flying into the cup playoffs. So we're going to talk to him. And you also mentioned about how important a hot goaltender is come playoff time. Few in the state of New Jersey hotter than Gennaro Anzavino, the senior from Bergen Catholic who made uh, 50 saves, against Don Bosco Prep in the Bergen County Tournament and then 57 in the eye-opening shocking win over number one Del Barton uh, earlier this week. He is our Player of the Week, and we will talk to him a little bit later on in the show. But, Corey Robinson, before we get there, how about Don Bosco Prep, Del Barton? You mentioned it a little bit in your opening, and uh, one versus two in the state. That's uh, All eyes on no, uh, in New Jersey hockey will be on that game. Yeah, it, it, should, be, it should be a great game. I saw the last game, and... Uh... You know, it was a very, very weird game. It was, you know, like a lot of games are, it was kind of played in segments. And I've never seen a Del Barton team get dominated in a period of play like like Don Bosco did to them in the first period. Shots on goal were like 10 nothing at one point. And if I'm not mistaken, Del Barton didn't record their first shot until like a minute left in the period. Then the game tilted the other way, and, and eventually Del Barton won it in the third period. But the shots, from what I re, again, what I remember, are very were very very close. And Bosco has been playing really good hockey since then. Del Barton's beat Catholic Memorial the other day at Yankee Stadium, and Catholic Memorial I think was number two in in New England. So you know, it's Del Barton is, is again as as Greg Tosco said when we had him on, they are the team to beat until somebody beats them. They're the number one team in the state. I think if um, you know Bosco plans on winning a state championship this year, that they are going to have to get over this hump, and I guess tomorrow would be a good day for them to uh, to try to, to try to uh, you know beat the number one team in the state. That's going to be a going to be a great battle, and I would expect a real close game up there. Yes, and before we move on to our first guest of its hockey night here on NorthJerseySports.com, Corey, I got to ask you to put on your other hat. Fairlawn Cutters won a Bergen County Jamboree game in boys basketball. I mean, you really, I, I mean, you, uh, the, what you have done with this athletic program, I'm giving, when I get the keys to the city of Sea Caucus, I'm making a copy set and I'm handing them right over to you. I don't know. I think we just hired the right coach in this case. And uh, he's, <laughs> he's kind of run with it a little bit. You know, the Brooklyn background and Coach McAuliffe is, uh, is a pretty good, uh, good thing. He was a teammate of Chris Mullins at Severian. So, uh, I think uh, I think he played a little part in, in Chris's success as an NBA Hall of Famer, and uh, he's uh, definitely leading the Cutters and moving us uh, right in the right direction. This well, week we have the number one team, I guess, in North Jersey who do you coming got? up, Don Bosco. Yeah, you got Don Bosco prep the number one seed. All of that, a programming note here on NorthJerseySports.com. <laughs> Our Bergen County Jamboree round of 16 preview slash first round review. We'll be taping on Wednesday night, and the aforementioned Rich McAuliffe will be a guest on that show. So if you love Fairlawn Athletics, and who doesn't? I mean, come on. Uh, make sure you tune in there. And I will put this for year-end awards, Rich McAuliffe, a front-runner for best head of hair on any coach in North Jersey. <laughs> I'd like to wait a second. Before we get into uh, the next segment, I'd like to say the way the Maven just broke down the divisions, I, yeah. I think if <clears throat> maybe if I could be his uh, – you know, his manager, maybe you could be his promoter. If we send that resume into uh, the NHL network, maybe Kevin Weeks will have somebody sitting beside him now. I know, I'm ready. Please, that, we that, can't afford to lose the guy here that, on, that, on his that, hockey. I mean, that who, was impressive, I'll tell you. Yeah, and who would we get to fill his shoes? I mean, those are big skates to fill over there. I don't know. If we can get him on the NHL network and get him traveling throughout Canada, Going ringside, I don't know, ten percent maybe for both of us. We could, we could split it. We'll, we'll be, you know, making some money then. Yeah, absolutely. And Dean Portis did do a great job on the show last week. So, Kev, go ahead. You're free to you're you're free to pursue other ventures. All right, All right. let's move on here. Let's jump in with our first guest of the evening. And hard to find a head coach of a hotter team around North Jersey. Actually, we've been doing it. 
Last week when we talked to uh, Dean Portis from Fairlawn, and a guy in a similar circumstance is Paramus head coach Dennis Jellick. Coach, I mean, first of all, the numbers are pretty crazy. Started off one and seven on the season, now nine and nine. I am not a man of math, but that tells me that you're eight and two in the last ten games. So, what's going on with Paramus Hockey? Paramus Hockey, first of all, guys, thanks for having me on. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Paramus Hockey, uh, I'm going to call it a rebirth of playing defense and playing hockey as a team. Um, we're going back to, uh, I'm going to call it 1980s style hockey in the NHL where defense first. Actually, it wasn't defensive hockey in the NHL. It was the Edmonton Oilers scoring 11 goals on a regular night. But um, we're getting the puck out of the zone. We're getting it deep. We're working hard and cycling the zone. Um, defense first. We like to call it the Anaheim Mighty Ducks of 2003 who had, who had a Jaguar in goal and played a defensive style of keeping everything to the outside and no great scoring chances in the zone, in the uh, slot, rather. Yeah, hey, and and Corey and Kev, I think we have to have Coach on for the next edition of the Great Eight. I mean, I was just about now. to say, with that little plug to Danaheim and uh, Jaguar, he might be a good uh, guest co-host for the uh, Great Eight. Here. <laughs> no doubt yeah. about it. Where we that that is our fa- favorite segment on It's Hockey Night, where we name a whole bunch of teams and players that I've never heard of. But, <laughs> Coach, has it been a change in personnel? Did you have somebody hurt early, or is it really just a matter of uh, playing better? Well, there's a combination of items going on. We had our seniors who uh, took the first two months off, I'm going to say, and then all of a sudden, around Christmas time, they said, you know what, we don't have many hockey games left. There's only a handful of games left. Let's pick it up a notch. We had a meeting, and uh, they picked it up a notch. Also, in addition to that, we didn't have Tom Palestina for the first half of the season. He's come back since January 11th. Um, he's got 16 points since then, and he's been – energetic as can be. Um, the Energizer Bunny, he gets this crew going better than anybody I've seen. Uh, not to downplay our captains, they were terrific and they still are. It's just this is a different group with Tom in the lineup. Uh, not just putting points up on the board, just getting everybody ready, excited, and uh, ready to go every single day, every single game, practice, off ice, on ice, he's there, he's excited. And he's got a busy avalanche schedule for junior hockey, so getting him to both places his parents are doing a great job, and so is he. So he's, he's an energizer bunny right now. And it seems to be working out well. All right, I am out of hockey knowledge. Kev, go ahead. Well, Coach, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, obviously, hot here the last 10. You talked a little bit about, um, you know, who you got back and who your leaders are. You got two big games coming up, I see, on your schedule, 2-8 versus St. Joe's and 2-13 versus Glenrock. Would it be safe to say kind of kind of little barometer games for you, see where you're at now that you're healthy and you got Tommy back here? You guys looking forward to these two games? Not looking over, you know, past anybody here, but I would certainly think that these two big games coming up here the next week and a half, you can kind of see uh, where you're at here. Well, it puts you in a position where you know what you're up against going into the cup playoffs. Mm-hmm. Two best teams in the division. Um, they gave us a good uh, butt kick in the first time they played us. I believe it was 11-1 St. Joe's and 12-2 Glen Rock. We were... Um, lost during those first two games. We were un- not very confident with ourselves. Um, also not forgetting, and not to mention, maybe you guys didn't see the game tomorrow against Old Japan is also a big game. So um, yes. that's a major yes. game from way back when. So there's three games in the next seven days that will determine where we stand and how it's going. But not looking past one arc or St. Joe's, that's for sure. Those are the two best teams in the division. Uh, we want to match up against both teams. We think they're probably the two one, top two teams in the area, and uh, we look forward to playing them a second time and hopefully a third time in the Cup playoffs if we get through other teams. I see that. Um, now, how are the numbers looking? Um, how many guys you combined with Lindhurst, correct? Yes, correct. So how's that working out for you? I mean, obviously, you know, you got your coaching staff here. you got a kid from a different town getting to the rink on time. How's that working out with uh, the kids from Lindhurst, and how many kids are there from Lindhurst? It was a little bumpy at first. Um, Lindhurst was new to the process. Getting into to the ice house from Lindhurst when they get, you know, dismissed at 250, getting there for 315 practice is nearly impossible. Oh. So basically what we did is we split up the practice for the first 15 minutes. We warmed up our goalie for 15 minutes. Lindhurst kids got there. We started our regular practice. Um, after a few weeks, they figured it out, and it's been nothing but extraordinary from there. We have three players from the high school right now. However, what we're really happy about is the 7th and 8th graders and 6th graders and 5th graders that are coming up through the system from Lindhurst through their either roller hockey program or their ice hockey program. And on our end, we have a parents association head named Kevin Moran who's been night and day, 24 hours a day, on the phone, on the Internet, posting things. They're going to have a middle school team, probably two, in the tournament coming up in the ice vault in the spring. They're going to have a regular middle school team. 
participating in leagues and have a squirt in the PB team likely for the spring. So our numbers, which were gloomy when I got here with 12 kids in the entire program, including youth, is now probably well over 70 or 80. So. Oh, wow. That's great, Coach. That's great. Cork? Yeah, no, that's exciting for everybody. Yeah. Coach, okay. Coach, quick question about the cup playoffs. You mentioned that um, – I'm assuming right now you're, you know, you're the sixth seed. I'm, I'm, uh, I would think you want to get up to four if possible. Uh, talk about that, that, uh, you know, that as being part of the goal going forward. Yes, absolutely. We want to be four. It's possible to be four. It's possible to be five. And it's also possible to be six, depending how we do against the top two teams in the division. Um, the higher you go, the, I'm not going to say the easier the opponent because the division just is not, it's not easy no matter how you look at it. Quality of opponents, like you, like we said last Friday night, we went played Northern Highlands and won five three, and scored five goals on a goalie who we feel is possibly, if not, the best goalie in our division. And the next night he shut us out two nothing. So you could, we would love to finish fourth, fourth or fifth, and play a game that, you know, we possibly could move forward with. But again, we're we're in a comfortable spot right now. I'm not going to say we're. That's our goal. Our goal right now is winning tomorrow's game against Old Japan and making the state tournament because that would put a feather in these kids' hat who, who tried and worked their tails off for the last six weeks. Coach, you mentioned, you mentioned earlier about getting back to 80s hockey, which is, you know, what I love. I love the 80s. That was, uh, I wish we could go back to the 80s. But, Are you uh, wearing leg warmers right now, Corey? Right? No, not at all, not at all. We got the Capizios out of the closet, though, just in case. Uh, Talking about 80s hockey, you mentioned defense and Jaguar and Anaheim. What do you, what do you, uh, what, who, name some of your defensemen and talk about the goaltender and, uh, give us a little background on, on, on those two positions. Okay. Our goaltender is Dimitri Tobar. He's a second year goalie. Um, he only played two varsity games last year and it was basically mop up duty for Kellenberger who had either gotten shelled for the first two periods or just wasn't ready to play. He never got a start until this year. This was his first year starting ever. Um, he was uh, shaky to start off the year and nervous. Right now he's settled in and the team is uh, playing very good defense in front of him, but he's making saves that he's supposed to make. And everybody knows that you're not going to stop the snipers of the world. They're just going to score their goals. It's a matter of stopping the shots you're supposed to stop, and that's his theory. Just stop the next one if something goes in. He's been playing nothing short of fantastic for the last, like I said, six weeks. As far as the defensemen, we have three. <laughs> Not many teams can play defense all year long with three. We've That's been throwing crazy. a fourth a fourth guy back there once in a while. Our basic defensemen have been uh, Rich LaBarbiera. He's a senior. Uh, he's a forward, naturally, moved back to defense and has probably 25 or 26 assists since we moved him back there. So that's been uh, – that's helped. Uh, Joe Ravel. He's a junior. Um, he's also a centerman who had moved back to defense uh, just to help us out. We have James Lyle, who is probably our best defenseman. And he's putting up a lot of points. Should be mentioned in the league talk when we talk at the end of the season. And last but not least, another left winger born and turned into a defenseman, Stephen Scheidler, who's been back there and helped us rock solid on defense. Nobody gets by him one-on-one, that's for sure, as far as getting by our defensemen there. So that's basically we have wingers that are converted defensemen and they're doing a pretty pretty good job in front of Dimitri, so we're happy about that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, it, it, it is good. You know what would be interesting, too? A thought just popped into my head, thinking because we had Dean Portis on last week, Farrell playing so well. You guys playing so well right now. Right now. And the, county, the Bergen County tournament is so relatively early in the season. I don't know. This is maybe even a thought more than a question, but like Corey or Kev, how about if the county tournament was now, the field might look a lot different. And, you know, not saying that anything would change up at the top with Ramsey and, and Don Bosco Prep and, you know, Glenrock and others. But, you know, that that 6 through 12 might look different now than it did then, right? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I agree with that, too. Yep. Yeah, no <laughs> question. No question. I mean, uh, you know, so, uh, coaches always talk about starting off on the right foot here. But, you know, at the same token, you also want to uh, – and then the right foot here, you know, getting hot and coming into the uh, the cup playoffs and in the states. I mean, you look at every level. You know, it seems like the the teams that are hot are going, uh, you know, are going places, and the teams that not aren't. So yeah, so perhaps, I, I, perhaps see one we would have had a Paramus or a fair one victory over uh, Mawa in that first round. <laughs> would have been hard to do. Wouldn't have been you know, hard I'm, to I'm do. S- I'm saving it for just the right moment, but I do have the interview that I did with the Maven after the uh, crushing defeat to Riverdale, uh, right outside the locker room gates there. I got him. He was still sweating, you know, breathing smoke. 
So don't mess with me, pal. Yeah. You get, o- get over here and snow blow my driveway. Yeah. And we're playing that interview. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Coach Jellick, was that maybe part of the thing? Like, oh, you know, county tournaments come and gone. We weren't included here. Do you think that maybe uh, might be whipped your kids into gear a little bit? Um, or- it definitely affected them. They were wondering what the qualifications were. Like I said, they're students. They don't understand the rules. And I explained to them the 650 winning percentage and all this other stuff. We had a tough start. And the first guy that came up to me was Dean Delucia, one of our captains. He's a senior who's also had a terrific year. I didn't even mention him. I'm sorry I even forgot about him. Um, he came over and goes, what's with the county tournament? I said, well, we're not really worried about the county tournament right now. Let's just start playing better hockey going into the playoffs and going into hopefully the state tournament so we can see what happens at the end versus the beginning of the season. I'm not necessarily sure that I was worried about the county tournament at the beginning, especially with our top star and seeing the schedule when it first came out in September, saying to myself, Oh, right. great. Open with Glen Rock and St. Joe's back-to-back opening weekend. That's going to be a good yeah. start. So. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you but... very much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Coach, how's, uh, how's the public gaze looking? I'm seeing that's pretty wide open, um, you know, with a couple left, couple games left to the state um, cutoff here. How's it looking for you guys for the public gaze? Well, we're not sure right now. We sat down as coaching staff on Saturday night before the Pascag Valley game and said to ourselves, this is a pretty good measuring stick on figuring out where we're going to be because these guys, like I said, we beat them last year in the playoffs, and then they beat us pretty good at the beginning of the season. And now Saturday night we beat, you know, them pretty well. And we said to ourselves, wow, we don't know where we're going to where we're gonna fix. Again, you still got to win games to get into that tournament. So it's mm-hmm. just a matter of trying to figure out where you're at. We'll know more tomorrow. If we were to knock off all Japan tomorrow, mm-hmm. then it will be a guessing game of where do you stand, who do you think you're playing, where you're going. It'll be fun, you know, going to check out some opponents you may be playing. So, yeah. Well, you're nine and nine now. You got Old Japan left, and then who else before the cutoff? Old Japan and St. Joe's. That's our last oh. two games before the cutoff. Nice. Okay. Good. Yeah. Great stuff. Paramus head coach Dennis Jellick doing a great job with the Spartans. Start of the year, as we mentioned, one and seven. Now standing at nine and nine on the season, and you want to be playing your best hockey at the end. You're doing that, and uh, congratulations on the turnaround. Thanks for joining us here on It's Hockey Night, and best of luck going forward. Much appreciated, guys. Thank you very much for having me on, and we look forward to talking to you again, hopefully, saying we're playing even better towards the end. All right, well, now we have some cleanup work to do here on It's Hockey Night, because last week, you know, we got into a funky schedule with a bunch of different things. We went political with the mayor of Sea Caucus, who joined us. We were talking about the winter blast and all that stuff, and we forgot something. We forgot to talk to our player of the week who was just outstanding last week. So we are going to make up for our mistakes. And first of all, we will welcome on and apologize to Bergen Catholic senior goaltender Gennaro Anzavino. Gennaro, thanks for joining us here on It's Hockey Night. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, well, I mean, it was really impressive, the work that you did last week. I mean, I'm sure you got a couple of good nights sleep. Uh, good good nights of sleep after those two games. Um, we're talking specifically about the Don Bosco prep game in the Bergen County Tournament semifinals. 50-plus 50, 50 saves in that one. And then you come back against Del Barton. He recognized uh, beasts of North Jersey, of New Jersey, I'm sorry. 57 saves in that one and really one of the most eye-opening wins across the state this year. So uh, you've been on a roll lately, pal. Uh, yeah, thank you. Just talk about, you know, a, a grueling schedule like that. So you can't play a tougher schedule against New Jersey competition than Don Bosco Prep and Del Barton. Just talk about what you were thinking going into those two and then to, you know, what happened that you played so well. Uh, well, I, I thought we could win. I think we can win any game. So like those two are no different than any other game we've played in the year. So... Uh, but, it, I mean, not a little extra pumped up for those two. I mean, Bosco is the obvious uh, Bergen Catholic Don Bosco rivalry, and anything is crazy. And then I'm sure you, the, the blood was pumping for Del Barton. I mean, it's, you know, with all due respect to a, I don't know, give me a, let's say Morris Knowles, they're not in our coverage area, on a Tuesday afternoon and uh, playing those two games. Oh, uh, well, yeah, everyone was really pumped to play uh, Bosco and Del Barton, obviously. But uh, we try and treat every game uh, the same, the same preparation for every game we play. Gennaro, just jumping in because I saw I saw both games, and um, actually I, I only saw half of the Del Barton game. But uh, you you seem to be very very composed in, in your style of, in, in the net. Um, 
similar I look at Lundquist? Uh, is that somebody that you like or, or talk about like your style and who you kind of modeled your style after? Uh, well, I like uh, Jonathan Quick. I try and model a lot after what he does, especially after uh, the one Stanley Cup run was just amazing. Corey, why don't you, you know what, Corey, you, I mean, being the former goalie that you are and the former goalie that you think you still are, actually. No, we're more retired. <laughs> Just give, give us a little rundown of his style. I mean, who does he remind you uh, of? You uh, know what? He, he, I was going to say quick after Lundqvist because their styles are very different. They're similar in certain ways, but very different in other ways. And some of the saves you made in the Bosco game specifically, you were like quick. You were, you know, pushing from side to side, and you made some really, like, unbelievable saves. And I – Remember t- hearing uh, Greg Costco's the Bosco coach, you know, say to his coaches in between periods, he goes, "What well, you know, something to the extent of what on earth do we have to do to score?" And uh, those some, some of the saves were kind of highlight reel saves there. So uh, Quick is a very good uh, goalie to model yourself after. So I guess you're saying Quick should be the starting goalie for the Olympic team over Miller. I hope so. I mean, they're both <laughs> great goalies, but I would like to see Quick play a lot in that uh, in the Olympics. Well, the Del Barton game was, you know, you kind of, not that you downplayed it, but you did, I don't think you gave it as much credit as you can. I, I think that game, you know, I, I don't think Del Barton's lost to an in-state school in probably seven or eight years or maybe not that long, but, but at least five to eight years, some, some people have said. That game goes on the list as probably being the biggest upset this year in the state. Um, how did it feel in that one when, when, when you got that empty net goal at the end and you knew you were going to win that one? That oh, was great. It was just like a weight lifted off my shoulders knowing how he put another one in. Uh, it was just an amazing feeling. Yeah, they, they keep coming at you. How do you, how do you, um, just this is a good, uh, good question to ask you. Del Barn, I just looked at the paper. They're playing Don Bosco tomorrow. You've played them both recently. How do you see that game uh, turning out, and what do you think of that matchup on, as they go into that game tomorrow? Number one against number two in the state. Uh, it should be a really good game. Uh, probably a very good defensive battle. I think both teams are going to be very aggressive in that game. Kevin, are you shuffling your papers over there? You, you got a question ready? Hey, I'm, I'm moving all over the place here. Yeah, Gennaro, first of all, congratulations Hell of a showing there yeah. these past couple games. Um, I'm look, looking at your scores here. You guys, you know, see, like a lot of teams, you know, like a lot of good teams, you guys seem to really rise up to the bigger teams. You know, I'm looking at your scores from CBA. You beat them. You lost to them. You played Don Bosco tight. Obviously, you beat Delby. But then again, you have a couple little slip-ups like many teams do against, you know, if you want to call it smaller games. Does that, does that worry you guys or you as a goalie? Is there anything that you guys think you need to do here to just, I, I would guess, say get focused for every single game? Um, I mean, I think the focus is there. It just depends on the way the other team shows up. So, I think we could beat anyone. It just depends on how we play. Uh, yeah, true. Go ahead. I, I think I think we'll be a good team to play against in the States. I think we should oh. do very well then. Oh, how yeah. about... Oh, no, Go ahead. You, you, I was just going to say, with the uh, new coaching staff coming in this year... Uh, how different has it been, and and you know how have you got guys taken to that? Obviously, you're having a great season. Uh, you got high hopes. You know, just talk about the the new coaching staff and the changes around the program. Oh well, uh, Coach Brian Monteverdi's just been he's been great, a real good addition. Uh, he's there for us all the time. He uh, put in a lot of new systems to help us out. Uh, have uh, has it been an easy adjustment? I mean. Was there a, a catching up period that you guys had to do, or you kind of just hit the ground running? Uh, well, we kind of just hit the ground running. I mean, he's a great coach, so once once he came in, he just was able to help us out right away. And last one before we let you go, just talk about the – obviously we know what they are. Maybe you could put them into words. But, the you know, the goals for the rest of the season here. We're coming down to the stretch, cup playoffs coming up, state playoffs coming up. Uh, what would constitute a good end of the season here for Bergen Catholic uh, ice hockey? Well, uh, we want to win out. I think we have a good shot at doing that right now and uh, make a run for it in the state championship. Yeah, well, best of luck doing that. Congratulations on being our player of the week and our apologi- apologies for doing this one week later than it should have. But Gennaro and Zavino, the goaltender for the Bergen Catholic Crusaders, thanks for joining us here on It's Hockey Night.
Oh, thank Good luck, you. Gennaro. All right, interesting stuff there with our player of the week, the Bergen Catholic goaltender who has done a great job for the Crusaders. But no edition of It's Hockey Night can be complete without our rankings segment, and we'll do that for you now as we start off with our disclaimer. At this point of the season, this is Season 1, Episode 9. I'm just going to say it quickly. Kevin Sabella has nothing to do with these rankings. Please don't give him a hard time. He didn't pick them. He just comments on them. All right, here we go. Coming in at number 10, and usually I hand off to our resident experts, but being that I am the host of the hockey show here on NorthJerseySports.com, I'm handling number 10 myself because back in the rankings this week is number 10, Riverdale. And the reason why I will handle it is because I don't want to hurt my co-host's feelings. The Golden Hawks have beat Fairlawn twice. The Golden Hawks beat Mawa in the Bergen County Tournament. The Golden Hawks are back in the rankings, number 10. All right, so now let's move on to number nine, and I'm going to go a specific way on purpose here. Corey Robinson, you got West Milford because I think Kevin Sabella knows him too well. They just tied 1-1. Yeah, Coach Sabella uh, not getting his victory on Super Bowl Sunday like he wanted to, but uh, got West Milford in the top ten. We got him ranked number nine, um, slight drop off from last week. Coach Fry doing a great job over there. He's styling and profile with that new line of hats that he's promoting out of Men's Warehouse. So uh, we got West Milford at nine. Yes, and uh, yeah, a tie. Against, were you saying that a tie against Mawa will get you dropped in the rankings? Is I that, think a tie or? against Mawa would just get you a slight drop, not not a, not a heavy drop, just a slight drop, depending All upon right. what's going on around you. Yeah, number eight, St. Joseph Regional. Hey. They're gonna like I said it early in the show. Maybe episode what two? Maybe um, they are. They're gonna be a team to be um, to be reckoned with. I should say. Uh, Larry's got them heading the right way. They're sort of sitting to the side. No one's really talking about them, and I think that's right where Larry kind of wants his team. Um, but they are certain. They just beat up on somebody. Uh, Ten of that is. Sorry, Coach Scala, but uh, right. but they're they're, they're going to be a tough team. Problem for them is you know once they get to the Gordon, they're really gonna have to uh, to raise their game here. But in the Cup. Uh, in the cup playoffs, I, I certainly can see that matching up with Glen Rock in the uh, in the finals. Number seven, Paramus Catholic, back in, the, back in the rankings this week, Corey. Paramus Catholic has a very good team. They're well coached. They, they um, you know, would be interesting to see, you know, where they fit if they play like a Ramsey or a Glen Rock or or a Burden or got, get a rematch with a Burden Catholic later on down the road. They, they're definitely a, a good team and. Uh, you know, they, they could be a team that uh, makes a lot of noise in the state tournament like they did last year. Kev, what's the matter with the dog over there? He's hearing a lot of shoveling out there, which is something that I would like to be doing uh, pretty soon. But, um, yes, he hears that. And he heard something about Mawa, too. So that's kind of what got him a little bit upset. <laughs> His feelings were hurt. So, yes. number six, Wayne Hills. Um, Wayne Hills certainly going to be tough. They're starting to really concentrate on their defensive zone and it's showing in their scores. Um there's certainly going to be a high seed in, in the public B once it comes around. And in the cup playoffs, I think their uh, their goal, obviously, to get that championship game versus Ramsey. They seem to be sitting right at that two seed. So uh, if everything goes their way, they should be, uh, you know, meeting Ramsey. But, you know, obviously other teams will have something to say about that. But uh, they got two big guys up front that can put the puck in the net. They got other guys who are going to grind you out. And uh, they got a pretty good goalie. So uh, they're going to be a tough team to beat coming up. Number five is a team that's working its way back up the rankings, knocking on the door of what who I'll call, call the big four of our top ten rankings have been there all year. Number five is Ridgewood, Corey. Yeah, R- Ridgewood's one of the mo- most consistent teams in, in North Jersey. They just quietly go about their business and get W's, and right now they are going to win that uh, the gold division. So uh, they're going to they're gonna be a tough, tough out in the playoffs and in, in the States. Absolutely. Number four is Glenrock, Kev. Yeah, they, they just keep rolling along. Speaking of rolling along, um, you know, I talked a little bit about St. Joe's. I think St. Joe's is going to be looking forward to playing Glenrock, um, you know, if everything goes their way come uh, come the cup time here. But, you know, again, they had a big win versus Randolph. Um, you know, they're come, coming off that loss versus Ramsey. But I think uh, I think Glen Rock's kind of got their uh, their heads on straight here, and uh, if they can just keep it together, they're going to be a tough out um, in their division, obviously, and then in Public B. I mean, they probably have their sights set on at least the Final Four, I, w- I would think. So, um, you know, hopefully things go their way for them, and uh, they're going to be a tough team. Yes. 
Now we get to Bergen Catholic. We had Gennaro and Zavino on as our player of the week. And if he can play like that, 107 saves in two games, Corey, they're going to be tough to knock off of that spot. They will be. He's a very good goalie. And um, I think that, uh, you know, they had a little bit of a lull after the Del Barton game, which, you know, obviously can happen. Right. It's uh, going to be interesting to see where, where they go from here because they – can beat a Del Barton, and you know they lost to Pope John the other day, which is obviously no shame. Pope John's a really good team too, but uh, any team that can beat Del Barton and play them as close as they did the first time can make a ma- major run in the state tournament. So it's going to be really interesting to see where they where they go in, in uh, March. All right, did I mix that up? Is Glen Rock was our number three and Burton Catholic was our number four? No, I think you're good actually. All right, according so to we'll... the, uh, the local media and uh, <laughs> right. CNN. Yeah, I may have. There may have been a hanging Chad on one of the ballots submitted by the uh, vast array of local media members who chime into our top ten rankings every week. So we will continue to number two, and it's perfect that it works out this way, Kev, because I know you love talking Ramsey Rams ice hockey. Hey, it's my employer. Love them. Um, they're going to be tough, tough out. Obviously, uh, coming off a nice four-one win over a, a solid Ramapo team, in my mind. Um, the question with Ramsey is going to be, you know, they're going to get everyone's best. Are they up for it? I mean, obviously they're a very good team, uh, very well coached. Um, but are they going to hit that bump in the road? Are they going to stay focused every game? I, th- I think that's what they got to ask themselves. And um, obviously they're going to be a one-two seed coming up in, in the States, a one seed in, in the cup playoffs. So they'll certainly uh, be an advantage there. But um, I certainly want to stay away from them as long as I can. I can tell you that. So, well, well, that's not what you said. That's not what you said off the air. You did say that you were. Am I right, C1? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to uh, make mention as well. Uh, but no, <laughs> I can't. I, there's a little term here in the media business that we like to call off the record, Corey Robinson. And uh, we'll leave that one uh, <laughs> where it sits. The number one team, not only in our North Jersey ice hockey rankings, is Don Bosco Prep, but uh, number one team in New Jersey. Up, that title is up for grabs when they play Del Barton one night after we tape this episode here. So, Corey Robinson, uh, Del, <laughs> Don Bosco Prep has certainly solidified its spot here at top our rankings. Yeah, they're, they're complete, definitely top to bottom. They have a complete team. And uh, this is not the prediction business, but uh, I'm going to go out there and predict that they're going to go up there and, and beat Del Barton tomorrow and get the monkey off their back. Say, say 3-1 one of those being an empty netter. I think the, the Ironman will uh, finally get their win over Del Barton tomorrow. It will be interesting to watch, and because Del Barton is not in our coverage area, I'm picking Don Bosco Prep, too. You, Kev? Uh, of course. <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> All right, that's the top ten, the NorthJerseySports.com ice hockey top ten list. And now it is time for our favorite segment, the one that keeps people tuned in here week after week as we turn to our experts to break down the NHL. We call it the Great Eights. Who's going first this week? Fight it out. It Um, is the Maven. Yeah, yeah, I think the big guy was up last week. Now, might I remind everybody, and you two, that I think Corey and I had six, seven, eight the same, so we will see what this uh, week brings in. All All right, right, here we go. Number eight, I'm still going with the Kings. I think I had them at seven or eight last week. I'm going to keep them there. Um, Although they've slipped a little bit, they've lost three in a row. So we'll see about that. I got Corey's boys, the Bruins, sitting at a number seven here. Again, playing some good hockey. Um, Tough at home like many of these good teams, but certainly a team to be reckoned with. Quietly, I still like the Avalanche um, kind of on the opposite here. They've won three in a row. Um, Their home and away look pretty similar. Again, one of those teams I don't think I'd want to play come uh, playoff time here. Number five brings me, and I I think number five's, not great for this team. I think they're better than that. But, again, the West is the best to me. Five, I still like Pittsburgh, um, sitting at 78 points. Again, tough team. Not a great away record. Tough at home, as I know, as they beat the Rangers all the time. Um, four, I still like the Sharks there. Um, again, one of those tough teams, although I always seem to pick them at the end, and they always somehow find a way to lose one of those teams. Never Blues. win in the playoffs. No, no, they they never do. Blues are sneaky. I like them. I think it's because John Davidson's there. Um, they're a tough team. I, I you I, really are a homer. I am. I am. Hey, twenty and five at home. The Blues. Good luck getting the win there. Ducks. Ducks could easily slide up to number one. Eighty-five points for the Ducks. 
you want to talk a home record, they, they have three losses at home. So, again, good luck flying out to Cali if you're playing them. And until someone could beat somebody, uh, the Hawks in the Windy City, I still have them uh, at number one here. Mr. Robinson, the torch is passed to you. Yeah, we have to uh, try to be a little imaginative here and bring somebody new into the grade A. So we're going to go number eight. Zach Parisi, back from injury, the Minnesota Wild. Oh, my wow. goodness. Playing some good they, hockey, playing some good hockey. Once, 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 we, once we get the goaltending uh, healthy, I think the Wild would be a team to uh, reckon with a little bit. They did play the Black Hawks tough in the first round last year. Uh, we're going to go seven, Colorado Avalanche. Great record, great coach, goalie coach, of course, great. Right, of course. Got to throw that in there. <laughs> as long as he's not fighting other coaches, he's, he's, uh, he's good. Um, six, we're going to go with the Sharks. Anthony Niemi, love him, great goalie. It'll be him or Tuka playing for Finland in the Olympics, and we'll cover that in our Olympic preview show here on It's Hockey Night. Oh, yeah. Number five, yes, the Bruins. Great idea. You can't just throw that in and, and, and not uh, <laughs> throw that. That's a great idea. Yeah, we have to do that. Yeah. The Bruins are going to be five. We're giving Big Z a couple of games off here to go carry his uh, carry the Slovakian flag in the uh, Olympic right. ceremonies. Um, the organization treating Big Z good there, and uh, we'll be playing Vancouver tonight without him, so I, I don't like that matchup, but hey, whatever. Number four, uh, the St. Louis Blues. It could be the cup winner this year. I watched them again the other night. They they had a lot of good things going on there. Uh, I like the Penguins at three. Any team that has Crosby on them and Malkin to me is uh, you know a tough out in the playoffs, and that one, two is going to stay the same. It'll be the Ducks, two, and the Blackhawks, one. I want to see the see the next time they play, see if the Ducks can beat them. Ducks have a better record, obviously, but uh, still like the Blackhawks uh, in the in the one spot. I think uh, you know Ducks are close though. It's very close. It's a toss up, but uh, we'll go one two. Hawks one, Ducks two. All right, and a lot of good stuff here as well on it's hockey night on NorthJerseySports.com. Thanks for joining us this week. We got a lot more stuff coming up. We will get our player of the week for next week, and we'll make sure we interview them on time, whoever that may be. <laughs> and uh, Kev, I wish you happy snow blow. Oh well, uh, snow blowing for you. I wish you a first pull start on your snow blower. Oh yeah, always Hondas, always. And Corey Robinson, I wish you a healthy back while your snowblower is on the injured reserve list. I will be ringing a friendly neighbor's bell and seeing if he can come out and give me a little hand because I do not like the – at 40-plus, we do not shovel as much anymore. We'll do the stairs and stuff, but doing driveways, nah, not, not happening. <laughs> All right, that's it for It's Hockey Night. We'll catch you next week. Follow the leader.